Get it? Cat, lasagna, Garfield, the famous cat who loves lasagna. Oh yeah, I got it. But don't worry, he didn't eat the lasagna. Lasagna is actually not good for cats to eat. Today on Worth It, we're gonna be trying three lasagnas at three drastically different price points to find out which one is most worth it at its price. I grew up eating a lot of my mom's lasagna, which I love, but it's a dish that I almost never order out at restaurants. And I'm the opposite, actually. We don't make lasagna at home but it's a treat when I go out. And we're off to our first lasagna. Yes, we're going to Pasta Sisters. Where we were in season one, episode two. So we are going there to meet with Francesco, his mother, all the Pasta Sisters, and we're trying the lasagna at their new location out in Culver City. They have bathrooms now. And wine. You know what they say about lasagna. What do they say? Don't get any on ya. Who says that? You've been on Worth It once before. After the first video, we had the line outside the door for a year and a half. And that gave us the opportunity to expand Pasta Sister to our second location. We have wine and beer now. And uh, we add a couple of dessert options too. It's the same family, <laughs> it's just bigger. So let's talk about the lasagna. Where does this recipe come from? I know this recipe from when we were kids because I was making with my mom. We put a little bit of bolognese on the bottom. Our bolognese cooks for nine hours, the same way grandma used to do it. So the meat and veggies simmer, become soft, creating this harmonious, fantastic flavor. Our lasagna has very thin pasta inside, so you don't have a really strong bite or a chewiness of the pasta, but it's more soft that it kind of melts in your mouth. And then we put the first layer, we cover completely the first layer, and then we put the bechamel. Bechamel is milk, butter, and flour, simple. And usually me and my brother eat, oh. go eat oh, the bechamel. Yes. Yes. Left over in the pot, you eat with the spoon. We take the pot and we lick it. We ruin a lot of people's life. Please explain. People are coming saying, oh, you know, my wife lasagna is the best. I'm gonna try yours. But on the next day they were coming back saying, don't tell my wife, but <laughs> this is the best lasagna I ever had. You put it in the oven, it become a little crunchy. Everyone wants that side. The yeah. one that is a little bit burnt. So you're all usually fighting over the corner piece? Yes. yes. We're back at Pasta Sisters, round two, with a bathroom with wine. In the original Pasta Sisters, very close quarters, sitting over a table about this size. Now we're spread out, we're outdoors, the Culver City breeze, sipping wine. A nice afternoon wine. So I'm going straight in for the edge right now. Oh, layers, cheers. Really good. I've never had such a soft lasagna. Okay. I also had the crispy bits on the end, and that sealed it for me. It is so soft, it's like. It's, it's a drinkable. Lasagna just might be the best way to deliver pasta to your mouth. So you've pre stacked it, you know, you've like pre constructed a delicious bite. It's so efficient. You it's already slow gone. Down. I know. No, I will, I will not slow down. It's time to have some the chocolate, chocolate salami. salami. Chocolate salami is a dessert that we do in the north of Italy. There is no meat, it's just the shape. You usually slice it like oh, this. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. So these are two different cookies. This is the wheat and this is the butter cookie. And we're also gonna try the tiramisu. My favorite one. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. A little crunch of cookie. It's great. Oh. oh. What if you dip the salami in the tiramisu? We're changing the world here. I gotta go. It was great seeing the Pasta Sisters again, especially Francesco, who refers to himself as the most beautiful sister. <laughs> lasagna fact! Lay it on me, like a sheet of lasagna. <laughs> in 2006, a man in Germany set a world record by eating 12.6 ounces of lasagna in 30 seconds. At first I was like, that's not impressive. That's less than a pound of lasagna. I do that regularly. But in 30 seconds. I do think my giant flaw is I think things are easier than they actually are, but that does sound pretty easy. Just shotgunning lasagna. We're now on our way to see Gino Angelini at Angelini Osteria, where we are going to see his green lasagna. How much is this lasagna? Over $20. Okay, it's gonna take a lot of green. <laughs> What sort of food do you serve here at the Osteria? We serve uh, a lot of the regional Italian yeah. food. Nice quality and simple recipe. Giampiero Cepaglia is my chef. 
10 years is with me, I'm very happy. So this lasagna recipe is your grandmother's? Close. I dedicate to my grandmother a lasagna non Elvira. I think I'm a good competitor with my grandmother. Do you think she would be proud of the lasagna yes, that you made? Yes, I think so. Was your mother's and grandmother's lasagna also green? Yes. I'm from Emilia Romagna, and in Romagna especially they make green. Ragù, bechamel, parmigiano, and green pasta. It's the same. When your mother and grandmother were originally making this recipe, it wasn't exactly spinach that they were using to make the pasta green? No, because sometimes we don't have spinach. They have in the garden, yes. They don't have, you go around the land and you find all these herbs, the green leaves. It was wild. wild. It's like different wild greens, Yes, right? they boil it. At the time, we don't have the blender. Oh, the, like the mortar and pestle? Well, yes, yes. Wow. When you were growing up in Italy, was lasagna you something you ate out at the restaurant a lot? We don't order lasagna because they make home. When you go to the restaurant, you want something a little different. The fried spinach on top, where did that come from? They give little crunch, right. make little different than another lasagna. Cheers, Steven. Cheers to you. Ooh, that's delicious. It's very crisp. Can we go with the focaccia first? This is my favorite kind of stuff, by the way. What? A basket at the start of your meal. That's amazing. I snack on saltines all the time. It's almost like if saltines had a bread quality. Look at this spinach. Have you ever seen spinach like this before? I have not. Cheers, Steven. Cheers. Oh, man. So good. Why are they not selling bags of this in the oh. grocery store? Wow. Okay. And I have to have a little spinach leaf on top. Cheers. <laughs> oh, crap. I know he said this is a classic lasagna, but I've never had a lasagna like this in my life. The color is ridiculous, right? It is literally like a, if a lasagna grew off a tree right now. Okay. Oh, wow. So we have this bomero. We cook it in the wood oven. We serve it with zafferan gnocchetti. We, use a, we put the zafferan inside. And then we finish with the balsamic cage vinegar. Cheerio. Cheers. The bone meat. Oh. Oh my god. Jersey Drew coming out. Oh my God. Jersey Drew. This dish reminds me that we are at a very nice dinner spot. Yeah. Because I kind of associate lasagna with something that I eat as a kid. And this is like, look at this beautiful date night lasagna. Ooh, date night lasagna. That's what you're calling this. That was delicious. Whoa. Bringing out the chef's kiss. When you do it though, it doesn't sound right. I think you're, you're doing too much sucking. sucking when you're kissing. That's a peck. If you love it, you gotta express it. <laughs> that does it for our lasagnas in Los Angeles. We're now on our way to Philadelphia to have our very last lasagna. Yeah, Whoa! That's the Philadelphia! Stuff. Cheese steak, cheers. Don't take any of my cheese. Mm. I feel alive. Lasagna facts. Lasagna facts. Garfield comic strip creator Jim Davis has said that he wishes he had made Garfield's favorite food pizza because lasagna is more difficult to draw. I'm glad it stuck with the lasagna. There are plenty of cartoon characters that love pizza. Now wait for this though. When asked why Garfield's favorite food is lasagna, Davis explained that he just thought it would be funny. But as it turns out, I hear from people all the time that their cats love lasagna. Huh? <laughs> All righty. This is a delicious lunch, but for dinner, we're going to see Scott at the Hungry Pigeon, where we're going to have a family serving of lasagna. Also, we got a cheesesteak for Adam. Adam, here you go. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> What type of restaurant is The Hungry Pigeon? The Hungry Pigeon is a farm to table restaurant, but we take it really seriously, so the sourcing is a huge part. Seasonally focused ingredients, local focused ingredients, all the vegetables are right from around here. We buy whole cows, the trim goes to burgers at lunch, the steaks go into dinner at night. But in general, it's supposed to be simple food that is very craveable. We modeled our breakfast sandwich off of McDonald's breakfast sandwich. We don't want to use a mass produced thing, so we use a local really creamy jack cheese. So we made like a hash brown that can go on there too and then we make our own sausage in the end like it's just a real nice fancy egg mcmuffin mm. <laughs> so yeah. we're rarely thinking about what's the cool thing to do we're always kind of going for like what do you actually want to eat that exactly goes into our lasagna that we're having right. today 
the ultimate comfort food. It's, it's geared for about four to six people. It's like basically classic lasagna, though some people might argue ricotta versus bechamel. I like the ricotta version. I just think it's nice. And also we make a very nice ricotta out of local milk. The quality of the ingredients means a lot too because there's a lot of bad lasagna out there. But bad lasagna is like bad pizza. It's like, it works, you can do it. <laughs> and then we use a little bit of the local jack cheese we have because it's very creamy and like oozy. So lasagna is a dinner only item. It's a labor intensive process. It has to be reserved 24 hours in advance. So we're drinking a Negroni, a classic Italian aperitif. But this one has a vintage Campari, so it costs $30. $30 each, one cocktail. And we have a high-end Negroni, which is served with a Campari from the 1970s, which is pretty special and damn expensive, so. <laughs> These together equals that. Negroni, cheers. Oh, interesting. Aperitifs are designed to whet your appetite. Makes you salivate, makes you crave. And here we have one of the most craveable foods. I love a dish that's served in the vessel it's cooked in. So look, you can see where it's bubbled over. This is the witch's cauldron of pasta here. You see that burnt edge right there? Yeah. Let's do it. How? Thank you. Whoa! Okay, now I'm getting the full scale of this. This reminds me of the very first time I saw photos of the Earth cross section. Yeah, the crust, the mantle. Whoa! Yeah, I know. Look at the corner on that. I can't wait. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Yeah. Ooh. This is more similar to the lasagnas that I grew up eating, which has cheese between the layers and on top. You want to go crust with me? Yeah, let's crust. Let's take a little piece here. You have the best looking crust I've ever seen on a lasagna. You're about to be mind blown. This is a boat of meat. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Why is crispy stuff so satisfying? I don't know. Yeah. We almost forgot about the long hots. I'm very curious what that adds to the game here. It's like an in and out when you get the little cup of pickled peppers alongside your burger. Is this date food, says Adam. It's probably not first date, but it's probably 10th date. Whatever the opposite of small talk is, that's what this food is. Yeah. To round out our Philadelphia experience, got some pretzels. Dig in. Which lasagna was the most worth it to you at its given price point? I have to say my worth it winner. I'm sorry to do this again. It's Pasta Sisters. That place is crazy. Having a glass of wine and a lasagna in the afternoon, that to me is a corner slice of heaven. I am a hungry pigeon, and I love the hungry pigeon, but I think my worth it winner has to go to Pasta Sisters. Just simple, mom style, boom. Adam, who's your worth it winner? Adam says Pasta Sisters. Annie, who's your worth it winner? Season six. Shout out, oh, teaser alert. Next week is the first ever double episode of Worth It. Double the food, double the puns. See you next week.